Look at what my aster does when it's cloudy and it rains. Look, they're all kind of like closed up. I didn't know they did this. They were so pretty in the sunshine and now the sun is not shining. I was going to record yesterday and I waited till this morning and now I have this. Look at that. I think that one's not yet bloomed. And this one is all curled back up. It's like it's protecting itself and sending out some petals in weird ways. Kind of makes me think of myself. You can see the raindrops on it if you look close enough. So this is what it does when it gets rained on. I had no idea. So this one looks like it might open back up as opposed to this one looks like it's drying up and is done blooming. I'm gonna wait to film this to see what happens during the lunch hour. Here's my aster. I just measured it at about five feet tall. So this is the Symphio Tricum Nove Angliae. Nove Angliae is a Latin word which means of New England and I find that kind of uh, interesting because uh, during Latin times did they have a New England? I mean I think a Latin is before New England. So Symphi O Tricum is uh, a combination of two Greek words, Symp for coming together and Tricum for hair or united hairs. I just have to laugh, that sounds so funny to me. So hopefully you can see it on this stout stem. Uh, it's hairy. And I think you can uh, see those hairs I can see them now it's rain today so my branches have fallen down but um, it's known to be uh, stems that are mostly unbranched and are considered clasping because the leaves partially encircle the hairy stem the leaves that clasp the stem have no teeth so we have an example of the leaves here and this is called clasping this is new to me I'm learning so they partially go around the tree We've got one two three one two three that's interesting and then the leaves have no teeth they're lance shaped which means it's like the head of a spear and pointed and sharp <laughs> I really found that confusing because then you can have a spear-shaped leaf which is more like an arrowhead. <laughs> so these are lance-shaped that look like a spear and again a spear shape looks like an arrowhead. So you can see the leaf is narrower on the ends and then I understand down in here which I can't see or get to. <laughs> the lower leaves fall off, leaving a bare stem by the time the flowers bloom. I've got a little windmill here. I had to sit on the ground, but between the windmill, you can see there's no leaves there. Interesting. They fall off down at the bottom. Well, I didn't even have to sit down. Here's one that's kind of on its own, and you can see all the leaves are brown at the bottom. Well, how interesting is that? And then there's the flowers at the top. The scientific name was formerly Aster Nove Angliae. And uh, the old name of Aster comes from a Greek word meaning star. 
referencing the shape of the flower, which is made up of apparently about 100 to 150 individual flowers of two types. The first is uh, in the form of a head, which would be the yellow part and the uh, in the center. And then the other is the tube-like flowers or the petals that are called ray flowers, I guess, like a star, like rays on a star. I can't believe, I guess so, if I look at it, let's look at this one. There are a whole bunch of little things. I can't believe there's 100 to 150 in that center, but maybe so. There, yeah, that's a better, closer look. I guess I need a macro lens. And it's swaying in the breeze. You remember this morning during the storm clouds it was uh, getting ready to rain it rained right after I filmed um, they were all closed up funny and I felt like that was a great analogy to me and how I close up when I get um, storm clouds of life around me so this New England aster has another name called uh, Michael Miss Daisy and the name Michaelmas daisy um, comes from the fact that it tends to flower around September 29th. Now mine flowered September 17th, a little bit earlier, and I waited. It's, um, I think, September 28th today. I waited, though, until we got more blooms before I came out here to record uh, my... Uh, bush is super full right now, but um, the Michaelmas is a name that is uh, used for the Feast of Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. It's also called the Feast of Archangels or the Feast of Saint Michael and All Angels. This is a great American autumn flower, so you have to have asters in your garden if you want flowers into the autumn. It's almost necessary for every garden to keep it in bloom until the first frost. Now this New England is a very tall variety and um, it's about five feet high to here. My fence is six feet high and I measured it but I do cut it back to get it this small, and this is almost too tall for me. Um, I cut it back three or four times during the year, and then I stopped cutting it back around July 4th in order to get it to be uh, this size, um, which is a lot of work. And I've bought some smaller varieties. There are some small, short varieties, which I would prefer to have. Um, but they must not have made it through the winter and I need to get me another one. I'm excited about a possibility of something else to get. But if you do get a tall one, you see how um, the branches, because of the rain, have all, like see this one coming all the way out here. They just fell right over. They were much perkier yesterday. But just know that you gotta do some maintenance to them uh, by uh, cutting them back and then actually when it's done blooming I cut it back all the way to the ground and it comes back the next year I don't know if you're supposed to but I do it now I think it spreads by uh, underground because I have these three here that are not blooming yet you can see they're the same leaf this one looks like it might bloom and uh, this has spread from there. I think it also spreads uh, from seed, but those just popped up recently. They were not there, so I may dig them up and uh, move them. So the asters do come in a variety of colors. Mine are the sunny yellow centers uh, with uh, the purple, which is just... Uh, <laughs> A bit of cheeriness in the autumn 
And I always think of it like this color combination is very spring. So it's almost like a spring, a mimic of spring in the autumn. Like to remind us, hey, spring will be right back around soon. And these daisy flowers are about one and a half inches wide. And New England asters are found in grasslands, old fields, savannas, and woodlands. And I love those kind of landscapes. Now I have another one, which is where this started. You can see here, it looks great with this potted petunia. This petunia is one plant and I have a couple other plants in there and the petunia has taken over but it's so pretty next to this. Now this is in my flower bed and it's much too high and I think I've tried to pull it out before and it just keeps coming back but I think this time I am going to try to permanently eliminate it from here and maybe um, get some back there in the uh, back 40. You can see how uh, tall it is. And I do want to say that uh, mums and asters are synonymous with fall flower gardens. I do have um, some roses blooming and uh, some uh, zinnias and uh, there are some liatris blooming. So I do have some other things blooming. But this is your classic autumn. The bees just love these asters. There goes another bee. They're just everywhere. The petunia going into the aster from this angle is fabulous. Different size bees.